right, everybody, welcome back. This is Paranormal Watchtower, episode three. We are going to dig some, deeply into some of the topics tonight that have piqued our interests. Hopefully, they'll pique yours, too. My name is Brandon. This is Ray. What's up? You ready for tonight? I am ready, actually. I Actually, I'm I'm kind of excited about this one. Now, you changed uh, it up on me last night. I, I did. I did. Well, as of last night, we couldn't do the pictures and stuff, so... I had to change it up. We were going to do uh, talk about haunted I- items, haunted objects. But since the dilemma, I had to change up my end, so I was prepared for this. Tonight, we're going to be talking about paranormal misconceptions. Um, paranormal amongst other things. Misconceptions. Yes. Or Interesting topic. Some people call it bullshit theories about the paranormal <laughs> oh. whichever one you want to call it i guess let's dig into it right so oh where do we start i'll start with the uh myth that and actually there's people out there that believe this stuff and it just shocks me um ghosts only come out at night apparently according to some people um, the reason everybody thinks that I believe is to, because it's so quiet and there's nothing going on. So everybody can focus on what they're actually doing. Um, during the day, people are more, a little too busy to, uh, pay attention to paranormal noises and reactions. I caught a disembodied voice at the Masonic Lodge like around lunchtime i think it was that's... We were up there and alive and i bet you weren't even asking questions or nothing you were just no i just went through and was showing yep i was just showing everybody on the live what it looked like and then something whispered in my ear and it caught it on the live and i walked back out now according to my research and my experiences Ghosts are actually, should be more, and tell me what you think about this, Ray, but I think they should be more active during the day because when they were alive, they were more active during the day. I mean, you would think so, but it seems like maybe it, spirits are night owls. Maybe, maybe they like to sleep during the day. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe they're up drinking with their friends all night long. Who knows? I mean, that's what I'd be doing. Mm-hmm. How about uh, only old buildings are haunted? That's a good one. That's a very good. Yeah. One. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and I'm guilty of it myself. You know, I'll drive past an old house and it'll look, you know, creepy. And I'll be like, ooh, that looks haunted. But, you know, damn well, it has nothing to do with how it looks or how new or old it is. Yep. Um, what what pe- people don't realize is it's not always the house. Sometimes it's the land or the people that are causing the haunting. Yeah. One of my mods, Emily moved into like some brand new apartments and she had some crazy stuff going on in her place and they were brand spanking new. So it had to be something with the land you would think there, because it was just a field before. Right. And it goes along, also goes along with the, uh, the saying, well, if somebody died there, it's automatically haunted, which we all know is incorrect. You know, or it's not haunted unless someone died there or tragically died there, which there's so many reasons that a spirit could infest a house or invade a house, whatever you want to call it. Could you make it its home? How many huh? ghosts there would be if there was a ghost at every death? There would be a ton. Oh, bad. I mean, maybe yeah. there is. I guess we can't all see the other side. I mean, we'll never really know until we get there. So the house can be brand new. It can be, you know, have nobody that had died there. And it can be haunted as hell. Could Somebody could have brought a Ouija board there at any time. It could just be the land that's haunted itself. Um, What else you got for us? Oh, I got tons. I'm just looking right now. Oh, you got tons. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm excited. I'm waiting for you to fill in my gaps, though, so I don't have to talk continuously. You want me <laughs> to fill in your gaps? 
<laughs> not like that. Not okay. like that. That's that's just creepy. You said it um, to me. I didn't know that. Well, apparently, paranormal. The whole paranormal situation peaked in the U.S. in the mid 19th century into the early 20th century with the introduction of spiritualism, which was a little quote I picked up during the research, and I thought that was interesting. Um, I know it had a lot to do with, uh, what was it, Civil War? And all the deaths that occurred during the Civil War, They uh, all the families wanted to talk to their lost loved ones and stuff, so that brought out a lot of interest in the paranormal and spiritual realm. I always kind of figured those early 19th century or 20th century, like they had to have been, it seems like they were into spiritualism, astrology. I don't know if that was like a leftover from the Victorian age or what that was. Oh, it says Mark Twain and Harry Houdini uh, were among the American celebrities who became part of the paranormal conversation and public uh, and the public gathered in homes and auditoriums to connect with dead in seances. So <laughs> Mark Twain and Houdini also believed in that, which I Believe, think is. Don't they amazing. say Mark Twain's house is haunted there in Missouri? Um, I know they have the uh, Houdini thing here in Appleton, uh, which people say may or may not have some stuff going on. There's like a, a museum, I think, here in Appleton. Just outside, just, I don't know, 15 minutes from my house. But, uh... Yeah, Mark Twain is kind of on the Missouri-Illinois border. I think you can rent out his house. I'll have to do some looking. But I knew he was big into the occult. Maybe he's it's, Illuminati. <laughs> it, it, while I was looking for, uh... Because it... The reason that I even brought that up was because it says one of the things that people actually believe is that uh, America's paranormal fascination is new, which is definitely not. Uh, and it goes back to pre-1942 uh, in the Roswell incident in 1947. Uh, before that, there were there were airships reported in the sky above the United States uh, even before that. But you look at Thomas Edison, he gave an interview in a magazine where he said he was working on a device. Um, he didn't say necessarily talk to spirits, but talk to people in other pretty much realms. I don't remember the word he used. All right. Now, I found something. I found Never something found. that was super, super interesting to me is that there is actually reports of flying saucers before six years before the Wright brothers first took flight um let me see what it says here uh, i don't know about that a news a news that's what it says a newspaper man se hayden wrote about a crash of such ship in aurora texas in 1897 about six years before the wright brothers first flight how did he describe it does it say does not that's all it gave me so it may uh, or may not be accurate could be just well it's on the internet so it's got to be true right got to be true got to be true um is it a newspaper <laughs> here's here's this one this one took me by surprise because it says here's here's what they say this aliens are little green men in flying saucers and it it goes on to say that actually the most popular aliens are the little gray men according to the americans um, most Americans, I should say, the Greys. <laughs> Apparently, that's a misconception, and they're trying to say that the Greys are actually real. So, I mean, if you believe in them, I, I actually do believe in Greys and all sorts of other aliens I know. Ray, tell us how you feel about that. I do not believe in aliens. <laughs> At all. At all. I'd be more apt to believe in the reptilians. Like, that just seems like the cool story to go with over little gray people. Well, aren't they supposed, well, you can't have reptilians if they're, aren't they aliens as well? Well, I mean, allegedly, if I was to believe, I said, I'd believe more ah, the reptilian ah. side. I have seen some very strange videos when it comes to reptilian people. 
It says, however, aggressive reptilians and blonde-haired Nordic humanoids have also been reported by eyewitnesses, along with dozens of other alien species. Um, so, Norwegians, Nordic, Nordic. They're... I don't know exactly what that means, but it says Nordic. I'm I'm picturing like really tall, blonde-headed people. So apparently, if you're tall, blonde-headed, blue eyes. You are an alien. Yes, apparently so. I don't think anybody's going to confuse me with one of them. No. Uh, yeah, another another supposed paranormal misconception, but I don't know if I believe in it or not. Let me know what you think here. Um, uh, they're trying to say, here's one that says, no one still believes in vampires, but apparently a lot of people believe in vampires right now. I was just reading about real vampires in New Orleans, apparently. Um, yeah, that's got to watch out. Mentioned, I think that's mentioned in the article. The uh, blood suckers from folklore have enjoyed a nice comeback in paranormal pop culture, and in the last few years, they never completely went away in some societies. Oh. Oh, hold on. Apparently, Indian politicians placed a $2,000 bounty on vampires sucking the blood from villagers' cattle in Tamil Nadu, wherever that is. Hey, I would like to believe in vampires because of Lost Boys. That's the only reason? That's the only <laughs> It is a cool movie. I don't really want to meet a vampire out in the wilderness or something i was reading something interesting like they have a big underground of vampire stuff in new orleans i don't know if they're just people acting like they're vampires i'm assuming that's what it is i would assume so too there's hell there's people online that claim to be vampires um i just saw one a couple of weeks ago that claimed that he drinks eight pints of blood a week that's a lot Oh, no, I'm sorry. A day. A day? A day. Eight pints a day what? is what he claimed. Of, you know, and he, I don't want to say I was, I believed him, but he definitely sounded like. Do you think we can get him on the show? I, maybe, maybe. Let's throw some holy water on him, some garlic. <laughs> right. Let's see what happens. Let's see if he'll show us his fangs. That would be cool. I mean, I'd, I'd probably believe then if his teeth changed into fangs. Like, can't just be having ground down teeth and try to fool me. Another misconception is uh, skeptics and believers don't get along. Well, that's not true. That is totally false. Um, you know, without skeptics, we wouldn't be able to do our job because we have to become a, spe a skeptic as well. Otherwise, we're not doing our job right. Yep. Everybody should be a little um, skeptical. A lot more uh, skeptics people. can, yep, skeptics can assist in disproving and misidentified phenomena. Um, leads believers closely. Now, don't be one of them annoying skeptics that. Oh God, yeah. Gets all stupid about it. Uh, but while most skeptics are confused with cynics, and uh, I can see that. But it is, you know, a skeptic is somebody who's basically, to, to me, the difference would be somebody that's open-minded and not totally like just out to call bullshit on everything, but yep. they're willing to listen to what you have to say and, and then point out the obvious. Curiosity is a good thing to have. Another one is the paranormal is bad for business, but oh, as I've it turns that. out, Person. Oh God! As it as it turns out, there's a lot of businesses that actually thrive on their place being haunted. Yep. I know that place in Greenville that I like so much here in Wisconsin. I won't mention their name because you know who knows if they want it known. But either way, they make a lot more money because it's known as a haunted place because they're open as a bar and there's even a country store upstairs. I've been told no because it's 
they thought it would hurt the value of their building. Hmm. Well, it depends what it is, I suppose. There's a hardware store. Oh. May or may, may not be the one my wife works at. But he wouldn't have it. What do you do? Just move on if they say no. Right. Another misbelief. Um, I, I kind of chalk this one up to um, investigating investigation rookies, so to speak. But um, a myth is all unexplained noises you hear are paranormal. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, you have to have a critical ear. You cannot just think everything is paranormal. Uh, Especially when you're in old buildings. Like, they just make oh, noise. For a lot. Yeah. People uh, go in on a hot, humid day. Oh, the building's just creaking, and there's footsteps everywhere. Yeah, building settling, wind. Uh, creatures, raccoons, bats. It could be a lot of things, but raccoons are terrifying too. I've had that. You just got to. <laughs> are they raccoon? You're scared oh, of raccoons. We started in this abandoned house. We could hear something in the attic, so we started kicking the wall, and whatever it was, guessing the raccoon got so pissed off, like it was growling, running back and forth. I was a little scared for my life. I thought a raccoon might be taking me out that night. <laughs> I think some people saw that in their life. Wow. I used to have four raccoons that would come up to my back patio door because we'd keep our garbage bags up back there until garbage day. You can't trust a raccoon. They were so cute. They were they were really fat, though. They were so fat. They were like the fattest raccoons I've ever seen. They, could, they were like waddling, but they, they looked happy. Uh, they looked happy. Live in town raccoons. Beating all the <laughs> trash. Uh, another myth. Uh, ghost hunting always involves scary encounters. Wrong. Oh, dang. I was going to go true. <laughs> no. No, there's often times where you'll hear, uh, you know, people laughing at you, picking on you. Uh, just almost friendly ghosts. You get a couple Caspers from time to time. Pranksters. I'd say I've I've only had a few just absolutely scary experiences. Most yeah. of them are just it's really cool to hear a voice or something. You try to talk to it. Well, it says thanks to popular media, the myths are just flying. Um uh let's see. Um the belief that ghost hunting is nonstop horror show. But most investigations are calm, and when you encounter something that seems paranormal, it's often just it's real subtle. You know, most of the time in a real life investigation, you're gonna sit there and think the place isn't haunted at all, and you're gonna feel like you're talking to the wall. It's later on when you review the evidence where you get. Oh, the, the wow factor. Yep. You know? There's a lot of times where I'm about to leave a place and then it actually starts getting active. Like, it feels like they mess with you sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, they I, they definitely do that. And that's, I think that's probably happened to all of us when we're, when we're out doing an investigation. We're just getting ready to leave and then finally something happens, you know? Or it's just getting late where you're finally getting tired enough to go home and go to bed, looking forward to it. Then it pops and then, then something exactly pops off. It's a great way to sit. What's your next one for us? It basically just says it's a the goal is understanding and exploration, not getting a quick scare. I mean, I do know a lot of investigators that are just doing it for the scare. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The hardest part is when you know the people. Yeah. That's the hardest part. That is true. It's hard. It is awfully hard watching watching something that you know is not what they're portraying it to be. Yeah. That is tough. We call that made for TV ghost hunting. 
Uh, so a, let's see. Another a, an, another big misconception is uh, high tech equipment always detects ghosts. No, my favorite example is the app, but they actually, the apps, but they actually use um, their example. Let's see. Um, EMF detectors, EMF meters. Um, although they're valuable, they're not ghost detectors. These tools can pick up environmental interference that have nothing to do with the paranormal. Analyzing data from these devices requires a quit critical skeptical approach to distinguish between general, genuine and false positives. Yep. Which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, you could be standing under some power lines and not even realize it. Your K2 will just go crazy. Oh, you could write books on what could interfere with it. You know what I mean? It's oh, just, definitely. yeah. Um, you just got to take like all the evidence and put it together and see if it's making sense. Now, uh, they go on to say, you know, it's just like it's on TV, which is another misconception, which we all know is incorrect. Um, yep. The boring experiences can often turn into fascinating ones um, after the fact. So oh. TV has it wrong. They got it wrong. Um, and they're portraying a lot of activity that happens in an hour. And that's leading all the youngsters to believe that that's how it goes. Yep. I mean, they're there for couple of days if not a week getting evidence right then you know i could take seven shows and cut it down to an hour and it would look like i'm just getting all kinds of crazy evidence well most most investigations are ungodly boring you know or we don't run from room to room hissing what was that what was that i've been possessed <laughs> Team members bolting down dark alleyways and dark hallways. Oh, I'm so scared. Now nah, it's 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 normally very quiet and boring, very quiet and boring. Until you get the evidence, then it cranks up. Ghosts are monsters. Is another That's one true on this one? You you think they're true? <laughs> I mean, oh. I can see why. Like with the way everything is nowadays with Hollywood. If you're a young person, you're probably thinking a ghost is a monster. Yeah. Uh, it says your ghosts are not monsters or spirits of the dead linger in a certain location due to trauma, confusion, or unwillingness to move on. They all have their reasons for staying, watching over families, waiting for grandchildren to be born, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, which makes a lot of sense. You know, if I pass away and my daughter's about to have a baby, I'm probably going to want to stick around and see that. You know what I mean? What do you think? I, mean, I don't know. For me, like, time is so much different on the other side. Like, I, I would have just pondered that by the time you get there and figure out whatever's happening to you, you know, it could have been a few years that's gone by on the earth. That's true. My opinion. That's true. But if time works after death, like I think it works. How do you think it works? I think it works to where you can visit. You can go back and visit yourself at any time. Time travel? Yes, I believe you can time travel. It's kind of like I, I always I, I, I always go back to the movie Insidious. If you've seen Insidious 2, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. They... The, they travel into, uh, they basically go back and visit themselves and they knock on the door and here in the beginning of the movie, they hear a knock at the door and they go open it and nobody's there. And later on in the movie, you find out it was them doing it. Well, let me ask trying you Trying to this. get in the house. Let me ask you this. Oh, here we go. Have you came back and visited yourself yet? Not that I know of. No. See, like you should write it on a piece of paper. I'm going to come back. March 1st, 2024, and visit myself after I've passed and see what happens. That's how I know time travel is not invented in my lifetime because I did not show up when I was supposed to. Hmm. So I don't make it to see time travel, y'all. I'm sad. <laughs> you don't like you don't like believing in that? I didn't make it. I 
apparently died before it happens. Uh, well, a lot of going back to what I said about people believe that ghosts are monsters. Um, there, people, certain people can grasp the idea of of ghosts and not be like horrible beings, um, or they're not. I don't think they're here to hurt us for the most part, you know. Well, I mean, I've a lot never of... read anything about a ghost killing anybody yet. Well, I've seen a lot of movies where they do. I've seen a lot of movies, but I'm starting <laughs> to get a little freaked out in a haunted place. I just tell myself that. Ain't nobody ever been unalived by a ghost. I guess I can say well, you, you watch all these people that do, that do investigations, and even people that are watching, they'll just get terrified by the slightest flicker of a light and have no idea what the possibilities could be of what's actually happening. It's like, what are you there for? If you're just going to get scared and run. I think we can all communicate with spirit in one way, shape or form. That's how I feel. I don't know if I'm sure there's people that don't agree with that, but I think we all have, cause we have a, some sort of a connection you know, they were human. We are human. I feel like it's, you know, some people don't believe they were human, but. I really like the time traveling thing. Like, Yeah, you like that? I do like that. That makes sense, I guess. If you're not constrained by time, you can do what you want. Oh, how about this? <laughs> people actually used to think paranormal investigators were Satanists. They still do. Uh, yeah <laughs> do they really yes uh, in, in nebraska i can tell you you will get called a satan worshiper that's unbelievable oh yeah uh, <laughs> uh let's see yeah it's it's viewed as witchcraft or satanism yep. in some areas so oh, yep still today still yep. today yep i've dealt with it with the stuff that happened at the courthouse like right, that's kind of a crazy what happens it's kind of fearful and seems seems medieval you know what i mean way medieval. of thinking i don't know like, and, and they don't forgive you for it no matter what no no <laughs> i bet so that's about all i got from myths unless you got something else i'm surprised you didn't talk about all ghosts or demons well that we really I mean, don't know, do we? We really I don't, don't know. know. I don't know. But I know a lot of people like to tell me that not all ghosts are demons. <laughs> well, like I said, you know, people used to say in my lives all the time that we're just talking to demons. And the one thing that stops me, well, one of the main things that stopped me from believing that is possible, is the fact that there's so many mediums psychics out there people that even just just the people that claim to be mediums i mean they can't all be completely full of shit you know they can't be you can't have every single one of them there's got to be and even if there's only one true story out of all of it all the millions of mediums out there if one of them is telling the truth it's true it's got to be if only if. if if it's now, a big I, if i have met a couple psychics that freak me out a little bit most yeah. of them do not so that's about all i got for that do you want to go into the cryptid of the week we sure can your cryptid of the week is da, 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 da. the jersey devil jersey devil now this thing is funny look i'm sorry I would have came up with a better looking creature. It's got the head of a goat, wings of a bat, looks like legs of a chicken with hooves. And that is awfully weird looking. T Rex arms. The uh -oh. first picture looks like a like a horse head or a donkey actually. Yeah, I don't now, the, the story comes from, like, the 1700s. So I, this might have been what scared people then. 
I don't know a whole lot of the original story. I know it just has to do with a lady who had a bunch of babies and all right. something about a 13th one. Well, let me give you the story, all right? All right. So, Mrs. Mrs. Leeds, L-E-E-D-S, they called her Mother Leeds. Okay. She had 12 kids. And apparently, she pretty much prayed to God not to get pregnant again. Found out she was pregnant with the 13th cursed her own child declaring that the child would be the devil so of course you know she goes on to have this baby and they said it was born normal but then it transformed into a creature with hooves a goat's head bat wings and a forked tail started growling and screaming and then it beat everybody with its tail and flew out the chimney damn so it was born as a normal human baby. Right. Huh. Didn't know that. So prior to the 1900s, it was actually called the Leeds Devil. I wonder how long it took for it to transform. It sounds like kids, a pretty instant. Well, my kid's 18. I'm wondering if maybe she's <laughs> going to transform yet or not. It might or have. If she just has the attitude. <laughs> It didn't get changed to the Jersey Devil till after the 1900s, and then, like a a lot of people started seeing it. I want to say, did, hmm. did they have a name for it before the Jersey Devil? The Leeds Devil. Oh, the Leeds Devil, yeah, named after Mother Leeds. Got it. Makes sense. They even seen it in like Pittsburgh, so it's not just contained to New Jersey. Hmm. But there's a couple years where wonder if any of the listeners have seen the Jersey Devil. Trying to find this. It's a pretty popular. I know there's been a, I think there's been, has there been a movie about the Jersey Devil? That I don't know. Do you know? I think there was a few documentaries done. I, I can don't see know. it. Oh, it has red eyes now, too. Of course it does. In Downington, Pennsylvania. Hmm. In 1951, a group of boys from New Jersey claimed to have seen the monster and claims of a corpse matching the Jersey Devil description arose in 1957. They offered a $10,000 reward for the capture of the Jersey Devil, even offering to build a zoo to house the creature. Of course, it was never found. Wow. All right, during the week of January 16th to the 23rd, 1909, newspapers published hundreds of claimed encounters with the Jersey Devil from all over South Jersey and Philly. Hundreds? Hundreds. They're talking it attacked a trolley car. It attacked a social club. Police in Camden and Bristol supposedly fired on the creature, didn't hurt it. Found footprints, cattle mutilation. So it got crazy in the early 1900s, apparently. Well, I did hear a story of one of the sightings of the Jersey Devil. It was the uh, father and son driving in the car down uh, their town. One of the they got one of those, you know, country road towns. You know the type, kind of like where you're at, you know. Right, like and Oregon uh, Trail. Yeah. And they were driving down, and all of a sudden, this big bat-like thing came and damn near landed on their hood and hit the windshield of the car. And they got out and looked at it, and it was standing, I think it was standing behind their car, if I remember the story correctly. And then all of a sudden, it just, whoop, big old wings came out, and off it flew straight up into the air. And they still talk about it today, and apparently it was like, I don't even know, 40 years ago or something like that, 30 years ago. Some people tried to blame it on the Sandhill Crane. I don't know how you confuse that creature with the Sandhill Crane. A lot like the Mop Man. Look at that thing. Can I, can I make it bigger? Hold on. Look at that thing. You imagine meeting that on a dirt road? Middle of New Jersey? And here's the actual house that it allegedly started in. 
All right, before we start our next segment, let's uh, go ahead and let Brendan do a little shout out to our sponsor, who's much appreciated. I'd love to. So this portion of the podcast is brought to you by Brian Payne Music. Brian is a local singer-songwriter from Wisconsin, building his music career. He's been generous enough to help us sponsor our podcast. Uh, all of Brian's music uh, can be found on his TikTok page, all music platforms, and in his link tree. Um, you can go and listen to his music, give him a follow, like, uh, or give him a direct message. He will respond to his fans. Um, find him in, on all platforms at Brian Payne WI. Again, that's Brian Payne Music. Great guy, been a friend of mine for many, many years. Yep, we appreciate. Thank you for that. For yep, thanks for helping us out with that, Brian. We appreciate it. So, up next, oh, supernatural crime, supernatural crime, or is it paranormal crime? Yeah, either one. Okay. This one, <laughs> this one is famous. Like I'm sure anybody that is a fan of the Conjuring series knows this story. If not, let me tell you about Arnie Johnson and the Devil Made Me Do It. So, if you've seen the Conjuring House, and there's a book, um, I believe the book's called Devil Made Me Do It. Let me look. This is a uh, Ed Lorraine was involved in this case there was a young kid named david that was allegedly possessed and during the uh, exorcism during the exorcism allegedly the demon jumped into arnie johnson things happened he ended up killing his um landlord went to jail for five years for it they tried to actually use the possession thing in court the judge said there's no way you can prove that, so no, you can't use it. Uh, later in life, the kid that was supposedly possessed and that family sued the Warrens and tried to say that everything was made up, none of it was true. Arnie Johnson, who did the killing, and his girlfriend, or wife at the time now, have always backed the Warrens. All right. So anyway, mm. that was the devil made me do it case. Back, I'm back after some technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. So uh -huh. we'll move on to Brandon's favorite part: letting the people in the audience ask questions. I do love that part. This is my favorite. So if you have any questions for me or Brandon, try to be specific with which person you want to answer it, and go ahead and ask away. We'll do this for a few minutes before we end the podcast. Ray and Brandon, do you want to visit New Jersey and see if the New Jersey devil is real? Um, I do not believe in the New Jersey devil, so no. I would go anyway to check it out, but I don't think I would find anything. Uh, see, to me, that's like more of a... That's like harder than finding Bigfoot, because there's only one Jersey devil. You know what I mean? At least with Bigfoot, it said that there's several of them. So finding one, I'm yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd have to say I'm not real interested in that. And that's like trying to find Santa Claus. Brennan, what's your least favorite place you've investigated so far and why? <laughs> Other than people's houses who say they have demons in them and come to find out there's nothing there. Besides that. Uh, Besides that, like I'm assuming you're talking about famous places. Um, yes, I would. I would have to say, from my experience, when I would have to say, Indiana State Sanatorium was the most disappointing for me, because uh, it did not for me, for my personal experience, did not live up to the hype at all. Um. And uh, there are a few things that were disappointing condition of the place and not a lot of activity. Um, if any, I would say that was my least favorite. I remember you going down there too. Like you were excited going down there. 
I was. I was. Yeah. How far of a drive was that? That was a boat. God, geez, I don't even remember how long it was. Maybe six hours, something like that. Six and a half. But no, I was all amped up to go down there and everybody said how active it was. Now, the, I can't really judge a place by only being there one night. I know that. I'm not, I'm trying to be realistic. But you asked me what was my least favorite. That's the one. Would I give it another shot? Sure. You always got to. Ray, what was your least favorite place to investigate? Mm. It wasn't because of the building, but you were actually there, JC, uh, the temple in Salina, Kansas. I had such a bad experience there, I wouldn't probably go back to even investigate. Like, probably no chance. Hmm. Ray and Brandon, would you say you're both going into an investigation to debunk and find natural over supernatural reasons? Or more with hopes of it being a supernatural reason for occurrences. I'm always going into debunk. Like, that's what I think everybody should be doing. Um, I don't know how you would know a place is actually haunted without trying to debunk it. No, I would agree with that. I would say that you definitely have to go in. And, you know, I sound like a, I hate to sound like a broken record, but, you know, if you're if you're not debunking stuff... You're faking stuff. Period. If you're not proving or trying to set out, setting out to prove that it's not the wind or, you know, and if you're just blowing it off as, oh, that's a ghost, that's, that's, that's BS. Yes, I, I agree with that. I don't know if I'd consider them faking stuff, but they're just entertainment. Well, if you're putting no effort into into proving whether or not it is paranormal and just saying it is, that's fake. I to see, me. I see your point. What is, in your opinion, the easiest to debunk? Um, probably bangs. Orbs. Maybe orbs might be the easiest to debunk. Probably the hardest to prove. <sighs> I think the hardest thing to prove is those of us with haunted dolls proving that the voices and messages are actually coming from the doll and not a random spirit in the house or area. I always kind of to, wondered that myself. You know, that's that's the hardest thing, you know, and it only comes from repetition and over time. That's the only way you can do it. There's there's no way to prove that your item or doll or whatever you have is haunt is what is speaking to you in a matter of days you have to it has to be lengthy and i don't know it, it's tough to do it is tough to do seems like everybody has a haunted doll nowadays uh everybody says they have a haunted doll right you can pick them right. up at walmart 9.99 mm -hmm. haunted i've seen some on ebay guaranteed to be haunted yeah, yeah i bought some of those How'd that work out? Didn't you ever you ever see me live when I opened up those uh, haunted mystery boxes? Yeah, remember those? Yep. Some of those were were, I would have to say there was something with them, but most of the time it was more for entertainment. But I didn't. I knew that going in. Was it a money back guarantee? No, no. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? That'd be awesome. They give you a ninety day guarantee. <laughs> I saw something else pop up, but I didn't get a chance to to read it. Unless it was just a comment. No, I see it. What would you recommend in terms of devices to gather evidence for new ones getting into this? Oh, well, we covered that on the last podcast. Episode one, wasn't it? No, that was episode... Uh, no, that was just last week, oh, episode last two. Week. New yep. What would you recommend in terms of devices to gather evidence? Like a camera, voice recorder. That's all you need to get started. I would just say voice recorder. I don't even think you need a camera. 
You don't think you need a camera? Mm -mm. Not for starting out. To me, it's way easier to get. You're going to get more EVPs or ghost voices through a recorder than you're going to get a picture of something manifesting. I mean, you could take a thousand pictures and if you're lucky, you'll get one good picture of something happening if you're lucky. But I mean, I'm telling you, I've never recorded for more than four hours without getting at least one. Well, I shouldn't say that. Not, I shouldn't say I never did it. It's happened, but very rarely do I ever not get anything in that amount of time. Right. I kind of use my cam, my video camera as my voice recorder a lot of times. So, saves you on having to carry around something it's nice to take a voice recorder and just put it somewhere hit record and then walk away and leave it that's when i seem to get crazy stuff mm. to both what is the best type of location unknown or known famous in your opinion the best type i don't know how you answer that i know how to answer that go for it um it depends really what you're trying to do if you are the type of person who's going out for your first time or you're going out with some friends who've done investigations before, then great. Go to a public place. You're all together. You're more safe when you're in a group. Uh, you can feed off the strength of others, et cetera, et cetera. But if you're really looking to learn about how spirits act and how they feel and how they interact with people that are in the homes and stuff like that, you definitely have to do a private investigation, a private home, somebody who's been dealing with something and they don't know how to handle it. Once you do a bunch of those, you, you get to learn so much more than you ever will in a superly overly investigated famous place. There's my answer. Makes sense. I I don't do private investigations, so I I wouldn't know how to answer that. Someday you'll, I'll have to take you on one. I would love to do that. Brandon, what location on the global scale would you like to go to the most? Oh, well, it's kind of funny. Every time I say that, then all of a sudden you got four or five people in TikTok going there. It's kind of funny how that works, but. Uh, Right now, I usually say Alcatraz is one of, that would be one of my top five for sure. But I do want to go and do an investigation with only a group of like three people, maybe four, and do a castle, an old castle over in London. That'd be cool. Maybe go up to Ireland. Uh, Ray, what form of evidence would excite you the most to get at an investigation? Oh, a full body apparition on camera. Video. Clear, not blurry, Bigfoot shit. Clear, <laughs> Bigfoot shit, he says. Yeah, that That's shit funny. annoys me so bad. They're like, look at Bigfoot. It's like, you're using a Nokia from 1999 to record that. You know you don't have your back screen on? Yeah. Okay. I can't do my pretty pictures if I oh. oh, get the fancy Nebraska Paranormal logo too. And I can hit them with the intro. Nice. And I can come back. <laughs> and we're back. And we're back. After that commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. By the Atomic Forged Agency. All right. And Kramer's moving service. That is right. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Am I allowed to stop the recording for both? What would be the one thing that would be the ultimate ironclad evidence that would conclude your investigative career? Getting tossed out a window by a demon. I'd be, <laughs> I'd be good. Like, I asked for it on every investigation. Has yet to happen. I would say five to 10 minute conversation directly, full conversation with, with the spirit. 
would it matter what spirit, conversation what what spirit though any any human spirit i mean you kind that of that. See what anyone that's honest let's put it that way who would answer answer questions and and have a five to ten minute conversation and get all the answers we're looking for you know that would be enough do you all think the scientific community can bridge into paranormal? I mean, science has always been dealing with paranormal stuff. It's just not mainstream. I mean, there's people that have tried to... There is doctors right now that can reproduce a near-death experience in people. I got it. They've always been curious. I do want to get yeeted out a window. <laughs> I, I, that's well, the ultimate yeah. thing. Yeah, they already tried to push you down the stairs. I, we were. I was there for that. Yeah, that was crazy. That was probably the best thing that's ever happened on an investigation. Best or worst, however you look at it. Yeah. I thought it was cool. It hurt. Fine, fine, but, fine line between the two. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Huh. All right, so that's it for episode three. Appreciate everybody coming in. All their sponsors. Brandon for taking time out to do this with us. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming in, joining us on our little podcast, Paranormal Watchtower. We'll see you on the next one. See ya. Yep. Get ready for episode four. We'll catch you next week.